Hello and welcome to the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9 FM. I'm Paul Kretschmer. Today, from the Yankee Institute, we're speaking with Mark Fitch about what it looks like here in the state of Connecticut at the time when reopening the economy will begin. We, we put out a call for the governor to form a task force on how, how to reopen the state. Not when, but how. If people get very upset thinking that we're saying that it's time to reopen now. No, that's up to medical experts. But, you know, you don't want to wait until it is time to reopen and then not have a plan. So uh, last Friday, Yankee Institute uh, put out a press release calling on the governor to implement uh, a task force, you know, to determine how uh, businesses should go about reopening when the time is right. And, you know, um, I, I don't know if uh, if it was necessarily our suggestion or not, but the, the governor has gone ahead and done that. Uh, he's actually formed two task force uh, task forces. He's joined a regional interstate uh, task force, and then he has a another task force that's uh, state specific. So it's kind of like you know working with all our neighbors: New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania. Uh, to determine, you know, when when the best time is to start reopening things. And then within the state, you know, he put together medical experts and, you know, business representatives. He hasn't announced, you know, who the panel is yet, but uh, he's putting together this panel to, you know, try to determine the best way to go about uh, getting businesses back open and getting people back to work. Um, I mean, as as I'm sure your listeners know, uh, the governor extended the shutdown to May 20th. I mean, that's, you know, what, four weeks out, five weeks out? Yeah, uh, that's right, between four and five weeks. That's a long time to, if you're a business owner, to have your business closed down. That's a long time if you had a job and now you don't. <laughs> and we all know that the waiting times for getting unemployment checks uh, are five to six weeks at this point. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's only so long you can go, and we know that this will pass eventually. But when the time is right to reopen, we don't want to be, you know, twiddling our thumbs or not have a plan in place. So that was really Yankee Institute's point last Friday when the governor announced that there was going to be a extended shutdown. We were like, all right, you're going to extend it, but you need to have some kind of plan in place where we can reopen at some point. And how do we reopen? Based upon what you know, do you think the state government of Connecticut or any, any of the other states that are involved in the regional effort are limber enough or light enough on their feet enough to, to pr- proceed with all deliberate speed as the case may be? I, I understand sometimes government passes off tasks to private industry under the realization that private industry sometimes doesn't have some of the roadblocks or some of the things that that get in the way sometime of of something that needs to happen faster than perhaps a governmental body is prepared to deal with something? Well, you know, the bigger the government, the slower it moves. So, you know, federal government is, you know, not, you know, nimble or limber at all. Uh, As you work down to the state level, uh, there's a little more ability to work quickly, uh, but obviously, you know, That's why we have emergency executive powers, is so that the state could even move faster than it normally would. Um, And even that being said, state government still moves slow. And, you know, you still, you know, there's been delays in getting, you know, personal protection equipment. I mean, overall, you know, the governor's done a great job, uh, but you still have government bureaucracy wherever you go. Uh, I think as far as will the regional group be able to, you know, do this effectively, I think they're going to be able to do it more effectively than, you know, some kind of federal mandate Mm. um, that, you know, because everybody's affected differently. And one thing that, you know, Yankee Institute is cautioning the governor on is that, you know, it's great that you're working with New York, but we can't base everything we do on New York because New York has a much bigger problem than we do. You know, they've got New York City. They have thousands and thousands of people hospitalized, much more so than we're ever going to see in Connecticut. And, you know, or at least based on the numbers that are coming out now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so New York has much bigger and different problems than we have in Connecticut. So it's great to it's great to be working and informed as a region, but, you know, Connecticut 
at some point is going to have to figure out how to reopen, you know, even parts of the state and things like that at different times. And, and that's something that Governor Lamont has talked about and something that, you know, the state specific task force would focus on. But, you know, different, you know, different regions have different problems. You know, New Jersey, we don't want to base what we're doing on New Jersey. I mean, they're, you know, they're a whole state away or Pennsylvania or Delaware. You know, those are all states that are part of this regional compact. So, yeah, I mean, everybody's going to, you know, they're trying to coordinate as a region, but every state is going to have to, you know, move in different ways because they're each dealing with a different set of circumstances. Two-part question for you, Mark. The first part is, are the states involved likely to deal with stuff that's more along the lines of interstate commerce issues because that's something that affects them in, in, in regards to things crossing state lines, and so they might want to coordinate some policies that have to do with traveling from one area to another? And the second part would be a, a sort of like, like that in the sense that are they likely to touch on stuff that – almost everyone in the region is likely to agree on and simply leave or shove aside the stuff that is unlikely to get either a unanimous vote, as it were, or almost every state in the group? Well, you know, this is something that uh, Governor Cuomo brought up in the press conference and something, you know, Governor Lamont reiterated is, you know, we share borders with, you know, New York and Massachusetts. If you open the bars in Connecticut, uh, but not in New York, people will just drive across the, the line. So there has to be some kind of coordination. Uh, and I think, I, I, and I think that's why, you know, we're really kind of focusing closely on our relationship with, you know, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New York, uh, to make sure that we kind of do everything not in lockstep because there's different there's different factors that, that figure in like New York City or Boston, um, but that we at least have some kind of idea that we're doing things in, in a sane way that, to keep uh, the virus from popping back up uh, that we've seen happen in other countries. So uh, I, I think it's a, I think that's a reasonable you know measure to take. Um, you know, our, our biggest caution is that, you know, when you have New York City there, I mean, we can't wait till New York City is cured <laughs> until, uh, until, you know, Connecticut starts opening things back up because that might be a really long time. So, you know, different in New York's a big state. It has different regions, you know, up, you know, northern New York is not going to have the same problems as southern New York. And it might, you know, northern parts of New York might be more similar to say, Litchfield County or, yeah. you know, or Collin County or something like that. Mm, so, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of different considerations. I don't envy the people who are on the task force, but I think uh, I think it's a good move to, you know, be focused on what the state can do. And obviously, you know, we share mass transit with New York City, with, yeah. with Metro North, and that's a big consideration, too. Yeah, I was thinking as you were talking about just that point, as you were leading up to it, Fairfield County and Westchester County in New York are more likely to have some similar considerations than, than maybe Hartford or, or Waterbury or New London or, or any other significant city you can think of or county that you can think of in Connecticut, for instance. So the, the nexus, as I guess they would say, would, would be an argument in favor of those areas being more concerned for themselves being side by side and having some similar concerns and, and travel transport situations and things like that. One final question for you at this time. Um, it's theoretical, and your answer can be as theoretical as you care to make it. There's been some conversation in recent days between the governors of the states and the chief, exec chief executive in Washington regarding opening things up. Does Yankee Institute or informally, unofficially have any opinion as to that kind of conversation between those two parties? Uh, well, you know, uh, we, you know, I know, I know our president, Carol, uh, spoke earlier today with the Hartford Current regarding this issue. Uh, we believe in states' rights. And, you know, whatever the president's comments were as far as, you know, he is in control of everything. Uh, I think we all know that's not constitutionally true. I'm glad that you're available to, um, for me to share some time with. Thank you very much, Mark Fitch. Oh, glad to be here, Paul. Thank you very much. For further information on what you heard on today's broadcast, call us at 860-346-1049. 860-346-1049. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff or management of the station. I'm Paul Kretschmer on the WIHS Journal public affairs from WIHS Middletown.